Yes, last week I did say three dogs is a good number to have because when you start getting overboard, you stop having time, depending on your schedule, to pay attention to each individual dog. And you kind of need to spend a lot of time with them, especially when you're competing. Three dogs is what I would have, two females, one male. Eliminate the process of potential fights, depending on the breed. Um, Dutch Shepherds, you could probably have, you know, two males, one female, whatever you want. Um, but I like to have two girls and one boy. That's the way I would do it. The next litter this year, yes, is probably going to be pit bull and hybrids. Um, potentially Dutch Shepherds if people need. Uh, but definitely pit bulls, questionable hybrids, depending on the demand and who wants what. Um, like I said, every time I do a breeding, I watch the puppies. I want to see what they grow into. I want to see if I see any issues. And then I reevaluate how I'm going to breed. Genetics are a tricky thing. You can have two amazing dogs and you could still get problems. And then you got to balance out. Is it the environment? Is it the owners? Um, you, you know, stuff like that. Generally, I train the dogs like at least one or two or I keep one or two close by from every litter so I can evaluate them. If I like what I see, I'll repeat or go the same, um, the same kind of breeding. If I don't like it, then I'll reevaluate what I'm doing. First of all, we got to define what your question is about lust. Are you talking about the desire to have money, power, fame, or what most people talk about lust would be I don't want to say the word, but S-E-X, desire, you know what I mean? Um, how did I overcome it? Um, I was ultra-focused, but I was ultra-focused on work. So if that means lust, I mean, obviously I wanted to gain footing going forward, and I had to pay attention. Like, I had to focus on my job, focus on my career, uh, limit spending, really budget myself, ask myself, um, is this a need or a want every time I went to go purchase something? And in regards to if this is regarding to women, obviously you got to just get your head out of it and focus on your goals. I mean, if you're, I know you're a young man asking this question. Unfortunately, um, it's a balance, man. Like if you like a girl and she's a good fit for you and you love her and you think that she's going to be the one then possibly pursue that if it's just about running around chasing tail that's a guy thing you know at the end of the day but um i mean it's sometimes it's very non-productive right and um we're still men so you just got to discipline yourself what are your goals the more you don't look at it the more you stay away the less it'll bother you use that Anytime you have like some negative energy, I wouldn't say liking a woman is negative energy, but if you're going to chase a woman, use that energy to focus on something else. Hit the gym, better yourself, do all that. Women will come, um, but yeah, it's, it's hard to be disciplined. Discipline itself is a, is, a, is a skill, right? So if that's how you're referring to lust, that is what I would uh, say I did. Now, if you're talking about lust in the sense of desire, financial desire, cars, motorcycles, watches. I have an addiction for certain things. I definitely have to calm myself down. Do I have a, do I still have the desire for cars? I'm a gearhead, man. If I could buy every car and drive around all day, that's probably what I would do. Um, I'm a gun fanatic. Like I like shooting. I like stuff like that. Um, so I, I guess I haven't gotten over the desire, but I can't afford, <laughs> I can't afford that. So I don't have a choice. So I'm not sure if you're, uh, if you're asking about lust in the desire of things or if you're talking about women specifically. If it's women specifically, get your head in the sand and uh, just stick your head in the sand and just move forward with what you're doing. Try to put blinders on. That'll, that'll definitely help. Uh, my course is not designed as just a sales thing, okay? It's, it's came about because of problems that I've seen and I basically had to reinvent myself and go on the internet and learn tech to be able to make my course. When I deal with clients on a daily basis, I see a lot of problems, right? When I see these problems, they all arise from miscommunication, some detail that's lacking, and that's the thing. You can watch as many YouTube videos as you want. There's a lot of details. And then if you get the puppy, which is fine, get the course when you get the puppy, um, now you have a time frame because you got the puppy already. So what I, if, if you're asking a personal opinion, 
what are you losing to getting the course early? If you can get the course a couple months before you get a dog, or even just buy the course and just have the information, it's so cheap, it's almost cheaper than sitting with me or doing a, a phone call for an hour. And there's no way you're gonna get this amount of information. So if you can kind of, you could listen to the course, you don't gotta watch the sh So you could listen to a lot of the philosophies and because over before we go over any course material, we speak about what we're doing, why we're doing it, why it makes sense, and uh, what you need to do to prepare for that, right? So I find that if you're gonna do that before you get your puppy, obviously you're gonna be in a better position because you're gonna know everything. Now, when you're learning something, you can learn the theory, but the practical knowledge comes once you're dealing with the dog, right? The course has, uh, you know, every Wednesday we get together and we can talk. You know you can DM me at any time and we can pinpoint questions. You also got access to me at any time. But um, now you're, you're, uh, you're ahead of the game, right? You're already ahead of the game because you know what you got to do. You know how to prepare, say for potty training, for puppy stuff. You're already prepared. You didn't get the dog and now you're like, oh shit, I got to buy this. I got to get that. Oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. So there's no negative. So to me, there's no negatives of having it early. Uh, if you got time, which when you're driving around, you know, when you're doing things like that, that's what I do all day. I'm always learning something. So if I'm driving around, I'm listening to something that's going to benefit me. If you can bang out 15 minutes in the shower, you know, you could watch these videos in the shower. Um, watch these videos when you're driving or listen to the videos when you're driving. You'll start internalizing a lot of this. So then you won't need to watch it when the dog's there and like paying attention. You rewatch the stuff when the dog comes, you're gonna be miles ahead because you already know it theory-wise. Now you're putting the practical knowledge to it and now you can see where you're finding the problems and everything starts making sense. You also are growing as you take the course. So yeah, it's, it's definitely a good idea to buy. I think it's a good idea for anybody that has a dog to buy because there's so much information in there. The questions that I get and the, the amount of time I spend on the phone, it, it sucks and I'm like an honest guy. I got my own issue. When somebody calls me with a problem and people will tell you this about me, I'll try to tell them, okay, this is what you need to do, this is what you need to do, this is what you need to do. And I end up spending like an hour on the phone, 45 minutes of the phone with my time that I just wasted with somebody um, when it's very difficult to explain everything when I'm actually showing it in the course. Right, and it's obviously it's a course. It's not me talking on the phone, so it's like very uh, put together in my opinion. And I plan on making it better. So no, there's no negatives at all. Uh, if you're gonna get into a UFC or you're gonna start training Muay Thai, I would suggest you watch what Muay Thai entails. Right, if you're gonna do mechanics, I would suggest you to watch what tools you need and you know watch how mechanics works. Maybe you might not like it. Maybe you'd be like, oh, okay, I need to I need to really be a paying attention to this when that happens, right? So to me, it makes sense. Well, Kinktail tells me that there's a bunch of bulldog in there. <clears throat> um, I've never had Kinktails, so I couldn't tell you my experience, but from what you're describing, that is telling me that there's a bunch of bulldog in there. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I'm not sure. I don't know enough about bulldogs per se, um, but if I saw Kinktails, it's probably a problem for me. I think in English Bulldogs, I'm not sure that they naturally have kink tails. I don't know if it affects their anatomy. I don't know enough about the subject, but I mean, your update, I don't really have anything to say about your update. I don't know. Uh, if I was breeding dogs and they had kink tails, I wouldn't do the breeding. Something seems off to me. Who knows if that, you're seeing a visual kink tail, but what else is not visual that you're seeing that's screwed up too, potentially, right? I'm not the guy to, to answer this question. I don't, I don't know enough about uh, kinktails. People are gonna start stressing me out about Freddy, okay? Freddy is here because I, potentially I might be the only person that could train him from what I understand. I don't know. Uh, Freddy seems like he's coming along fairly well. I think the issue is mom. And I had this discussion with mom. A lot of the times when you're training a dog, there's a dog issue, there's a genetic component, and there's also mom and dad at home, okay? And sometimes they over, they overdo things and sometimes they underdo things. And my, my game plan is to train 
mom and the owner too. And it's very difficult when you're dealing with people because their dog is their kid. So you can't just say your dog is retarded or you can't love your dog like that because this is what's gonna happen because it goes through one ear and the other. So the art of communication when it comes to dealing with people and their dog, especially women, you gotta be really careful. Me personally, I'm the kind of guy that's like a dude that deals with dudes, okay? And it's more like, shut the hell up, do what I tell you, do, do this, it works and I can prove it to you, okay? This is what I'm doing, you need to do the same thing, right? Do, but what I, what I have to realize is not everybody's going to be like that, right? So it's taken me some years to kind of calm down and realize that women are more emotional and some people are more um, uh, emotional thinkers than logical thinkers. It's not a bad thing, it's just a thing, right? And you need to come to grips with what's logical and what's emotional. And there's sometimes when you shouldn't do certain things, right? Like so, there's certain times when you shouldn't cuddle your dog. I cuddle my dogs all the time, but they also have a foundation. And if that foundation is not set, then you could be reinforcing other things and it gets really complicated. So yeah, I'm glad you guys are cheering for Freddie. She's got me stressed out because all y'all watching this dog, Freddie, Freddie is not the kind of dog you gotta rush. And I told the mom that. And people don't know this about me. When I do a board and train, I charge for a month. If the dog is, and anybody that's dealt with me will tell you this. If I don't see the results that I want in that month, I'll keep the dog an extra two, three weeks. It sucks for me, and this is why I don't make no money, but I want the owner to be happy. I haven't really had anybody that had a board and train or even training that didn't like how it went down. The only people that had a problem with me is when I was too brash with them, but people don't like honesty. If you're doing dumb shit and you're going to other trainers doing stupid shit and then you're coming to me to fix the problem and then you're not listening to me and telling me about what the other guy told you, I'm gonna tell you you're retarded. And if you don't like that, don't deal with me. You want honesty, you want me to save you money, then, then I'm the right guy. If you want bullshit, go somewhere else. If you want somebody to blow smoke up your ass and tell you, I told Freddie's mom, I can't guarantee that I'm gonna fix his dog. I told her, sounds like you've done everything right, right? Sounds like you've done everything right from the phone and that potentially it's the dog and the dog's genetics. Maybe it's not a good idea for you to bring the dog here because this is probably not the right dog for you. When I see the dog and I see the mom and I see the interaction, now I'm like, okay, certain things are not what they seem. Let me feel out this dog. A dog like that's gonna need time. You gotta build a bond with him. You can't just take the dog, put a choker on him and try to fix the dog. The dog really doesn't have many issues. I've already fixed a bunch of issues so far. Now I need time to bond with him, build a bond, then start training. That's my process, right? It's not just take the dog, try to kill the problem, put an e-collar on the dog. No dog here wears an e-collar. Now. Freddie's mama's super sweet, super sweet person, okay? She loves the dog. That's why I told her I'll help her with the dog. She called me twice. I told her I'll help her with the dog because I already know where this is going. She takes the dog somewhere else, I don't know what's gonna happen, okay? And she didn't feel right about certain people and whatever the case is. So I'm gonna put my best step forward. So the mom is not, she's not doing anything wrong. She's super sweet, but she also needs like even, even this simple scenario. I didn't call the mom to tell her, Freddie's mom, I didn't call Freddie's mom to tell her the dog's doing fine. Why did I not do that? Because I need her to start disassociating herself with Freddie. She's crazy in love with Freddie. I get it, I love my dogs too. But there's certain things that you do that you are actually, you're thinking with emotion and you're logically messing up the dog. It's a dog, it's not a human. And at the end of the day, they do think differently. Remember, they need to survive in our world. They are dogs. They are going to think like dogs. I don't care what you do. You, you can't humanize them. You can get them to live in our world and be normal and understand, okay, we're living in a human world. If you want to treat the dog like a dog, then you got to go live in the forest and live like a dog. When you meet another dog, you, you're going to assess them. Okay, is he dominant? Do I join the pack? Do I get out of the pack? Do I fight? I mean, if you want to live that life, then you need to go live in the forest. If not, the dog needs to live in the human world. You gotta bring the dog up in the human world. So you gotta cut some of the emotion and you gotta, you gotta kind of navigate the dog through our world, right? Nothing negative, it's just a learning curve. And that's why I didn't call Freddie's mom because she needs to kind of detach. Both of them need to detach from each other. 
because they're too like, oh, I love you, I love you, which is amazing. I wish I had a Freddy's mom as a girlfriend because I wouldn't have to do shit. I could just chill all day and get my feet massaged and fed and... How the hell Freddy got more fans than me? Everybody pulling for Freddy. She done told the whole world about Freddy going to me for training. You stressing me out, woman. Tell Freddy mama I'm a kill ass if she keep up with this bullshit. Got everybody messaging me about Freddy. We pulling for Freddy. All these people are talking about Freddy, Freddy, Freddy. I'm a kill Freddy, okay? For anybody wondering who Freddy is, Freddy is a mixed breed dog that has come to me for training that apparently is super anxiety and he got issues he pulls he's scared of things he's not confident you know um he looks like a shepherd husky mix pretty dog cute dog i don't see any major issues right now but uh apparently he can't be trained and he's a he's a, pro a lot of trainers turned away turned him away and this and that that's who freddie is so freddie's living with me right now but freddie just went from the woke mind frame living in a woke society to marine corps boot camp when we are done basic training we are going to go to special operations that's where i that's how i look at this dog okay so now i gotta rewire his brain in boot camp rewire all of this thinking and teach you how to be a soldier it's personal preference i don't like pharmaceuticals I don't believe that you need all of the pharmaceuticals. I believe that you need what's necessary. What's necessary for you is different than what's necessary to me. I didn't take the vaccine. I don't get vaccines if I don't really need them. I don't take no flu shot. I don't take, I eat food that's spoiled. I mean, I'm like from the hood, okay? So for me, um, I, I don't think they need anything. Uh, I think the government has a, and the pharmaceutical companies have a agenda is what I think. Every dog needs a vaccination where I live for rabies. There is no rabies. People living in condos in downtown, there's no rabies there. So why does every dog need a rabies shot? And then why does this big need a rabies shot that the same dog this big get a rabies shot on? Like, you know what I mean? That don't make no sense to me. So for me, as we've learned with COVID, right, the pharmaceutical companies don't really know what they're doing either. We put our trust in these people thinking that they know what they're doing. Now, I think our environment's pretty screwed up. I think the plastics in our water, anyway, I'm not gonna get down, this is a whole other whole conversation here, okay? So we're not gonna get into that. But what I can tell you is, do, use your own judgment. I don't use vaccinations. I trust my vet, me and him have conversations. And I take his suggestion, but I make the final decision. And I love my vet. He's the best. Both of them. I haven't done much, but I might go out actually tonight. Okay. I might dress up as a cowboy because I got all the get up. You know what I'm saying? Or a soldier because I got all the get up. I'm not buying a costume, but I might go out tonight. Yes. So I might actually go out, maybe have a drink or two. Because I need a break before I, before I choke somebody out. This is a question regarding all the pit bulls up for adoption. Now, I hate this. I hate the adoption shit. I hate dogs going to shelter. This is all because of shitty breedings, okay? And people that are shit. This is why these dogs are in shelters. The problem with adoptions, and this is an honest problem. Like, again, I'm not thinking with emotion. I'm thinking with logic. The problem with adoption is you're getting a dog that you don't know the genetics behind. When it comes to pitties, some of them are really screwed up in the head. And unless you're an expert trainer, it's not a dog you want to live with. It's a dog that I can manage. You can't live with that dog, okay? And that's the truth. That's not ego. That's no gangster shit. I don't want to live with a dog like that. So the problem is, is I know we feel compassion and we want to help everybody. Listen, I've helped many women in their lives, okay? With trying to get them to be better and trying to do this and do that. You know what happened to me? I wasted my time. What happened to me? Because I saw the damsel in distress, I tried to help them, talk to them, say, look, you could do this, you could do that. And then guess what I'm doing? Investing time into something that don't want to really be changed. Okay? And that's what the dogs are like. So at the end of the day, as much as I want to save every dog and help every dog, some of these dogs are just, they're kind of screwed up. And it's not always the owner and this bullshit. There is a genetic component. 
people that say it's the owner, not the dog, that's total bullshit. I have some of the best owners coming to me with rescues that have spent retarded amounts of money because I got to charge them for all that time, right? And then at the end of the day, you should just bought a dog from me or a reputable breeder that breeds to a standard. I mean, you're not going to really have a problem. Now, even when you go to a breeder, you can still have problems, right? There are certain things that you can't control as a breeder. Genetics, you can't really control, but you could try your best. I've trained a Neo uh, in the past. And uh, if you live a lifestyle where you can control the dog, a true Mastiff, um, then yes, a Neo is maybe a good one. The Neos that are out now are all for looks. They're big and jowly and I don't want no part of that. They look like a health disaster, okay? So for me, I wouldn't want a Neo. Um, Corso, if you could find a good Corso uh, from a reputable breeder, I know one, um, then a Corso is a great dog. They're naturally going to be more protective. They're not going to have a crazy amount of prey drive, depending on the breeder, right? And I actually had a Corso from Italy that I trained, and the dog was super cool. I wasn't at the time when I was training that dog. I didn't know much about them. I just knew that this dog was a true version of a Corso. I would throw a ball. He didn't care. I had dogs on spring pole. He didn't give a shit. Like he didn't care about nothing. He didn't want to socialize with other dogs. He was chill. He would like walk around with other dogs. All he wanted to do was lay on my leg. He was a cool ass dog, man. I should have kept his ass. But um, and then one day I took him out and somebody did some weird shit. And out of nowhere, he turned into a monster. Okay, and I was like, whoa, where did that come from? That's what I would think a true Corso is, right? He's not paying attention to stupid shit. He doesn't have prey drive, which is the purpose. He's a, he's a guardian breed. He's not supposed to be chasing no rabbits and looking at stupid shit. He's supposed to be staying next to you and just watching what's going on. Sensitive, they're sensitive dogs, to correction. This dog was sensitive. You gotta remember, back in Italy, you got an old man moving around some tomatoes and walking around, he got this big ass dog. That dog was there to protect him. He didn't need that dog chasing no rabbits and pulling on the line and all this crazy shit. He needed a dog just chill. He yelled at the dog once. The dog was like, okay, dad. That is a Corso, okay, to me. That's like a perfect Corso to me. So if you're going to get a Corso like that as a family guard dog, um, if you're going to get a tr traditional family Corso like that, uh, yes, I would, I would say that's a great dog to have. The problem is, is there's health issues, okay? So some of these dogs are having like seizures and it's even come in the line of pit bulls now. I mean, it's, genetics are a hard thing to, to gauge, right? You can have a litter of dogs and two can have an issues and eight can be perfect. So I can't guide you in that direction, but if, if, if you were to say, I have a, access to an amazing Corso and the breeder knows what he's doing and I've seen five dogs and they're all consistent, then yes, I would say a Corso is great. Neo, Neo, I would probably stay away from, in my opinion. Thank you guys for watching this question and answer. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, you know the usual. Uh, message me if you have any problems. And don't be a piece of shit. We're going to have a weird... Next two weeks is going to be a very weird two weeks in our country. North America, I'm talking about. Actually, the world. So, let's hope things go good. If not, I hope you have your ammunition ready. Love you guys. Be safe. Don't be a piece of shit. Have a nice day.